Good afternoon, everybody. This is Trey getting back in touch with you. Today we have another stock analysis. We're looking at MasterCard. Last week we looked at Visa. In the coming days we'll be looking at Discover Card, maybe American Express. And then I'll be doing a video that compares all of them so you can figure out maybe which one is most suitable for your needs and your goals. First, let's start out with a quick little history lesson. In 1969, a bunch of banks got together and formed the Interbank Card Association and purchased Master Charge, at which point the current MasterCard became a thing and their logo was created. At that point, Master, MasterCard started to grow steadily and continues to grow. In 2019, for the first time ever, cashless transactions surpassed cash transactions in the world. And MasterCard continues to ride that wave of growth. And you're probably already familiar with the fact that Visa is their largest competitor. Visa uh, processes double the number of transactions and also double the purchase transaction volume than MasterCard. But MasterCard has a similarly tremendous lead over any of its other competitors. And on the global scene, Visa and MasterCard are kind of the only ones who have that network effect going for them. In 2019, MasterCard processed almost $5 trillion in transactions throughout the world. Their market share internationally for credit cards is estimated to be about 29% and for debit cards about 25%. This gives MasterCard a huge, tremendous, unassailable position in the global market providing security for the years to come for investors like you. Let's take a look at some of the quick stats uh, just to give you a feel for how the company looks. Uh, current price is 311 bucks, um, but it's in a 52 week range of 199 to 347. EPS, $7.79. Uh, quarterly dividend of 40 cents and an annual dividend of a, of a buck 60 with an annual dividend yield of just 0.52 percent. Let's take a look at some of the recent charts. Here is the three-month chart. You can see that dip going back. Uh, I it hit its worst kind of in the middle of March uh, with a nice recovery coming back up. Here is the six-month chart. You can see the peak kind of back there in mid-February. Here's the one-year chart. You can get a better idea of kind of how the price has trended and actually going back to like last June's prices, last October prices, we've already exceeded those. And then here's the five-year chart. Um, looking back over five years, it's seen tremendous growth. Let's take a look at this chart by Refinitiv. We can see the P from the last four quarters is significantly higher than the S&P 500s at 40, which some might consider to be a little bit too pricey. But check it out down here in the growth metrics, looking at the one and three year sales growth, um, we're seeing that they're beating out the S&P 500. Credit card companies traditionally are very profitable and don't have a lot of huge capital expense going on regularly um, once they have their networks in place. Uh, we can see that MasterCard is reaping that fruit, especially in the one-year sales growth. But even if we go down to the long-term growth rate, uh, it still beats out the S&P 500 kind of average of 12.4% at 14.3%. Take a look at the dividend growth rate right below that. Both super attractive looking. One year, 32%. Let's slide down here to financial metrics. Uh, net margin, look at that, dude. Super juicy, 46% net margin. Um, the gross margin here is just nothing, I think, because the last quarter was just rough with everything going on with the sickness. Return on assets, also looking similarly juicy compared to the average S&P 500 company. So with those big dips going on in the charts, you might be wondering, are things going to be okay with this company? I don't know, man. So um, looking at the numbers, it looks like their revenues haven't started to return quite yet. Um, but the bigger thing for both Visa and MasterCard is international travel. So if I use a credit card um, outside of my own country when I'm traveling, the credit card processor gets to keep a larger percentage of the transaction fee. And so those numbers have gone down by almost 50%, um, which takes a big chunk out of MasterCard's revenue. Um, with those international transaction fees usually add up being like 22% or so of their annual revenues. So with that gone, we should expect to see a big hit in the revenues. But at the same time, um, online sales are growing and will continue to grow 
probably permanently from now on, which MasterCard is in a really good position to capitalize on. Should also note that on a net revenue basis, operating margins declined about 1.5% in the last year. So how should we be thinking about these numbers with MasterCard going forward? I think that MasterCard is in a really strong position in the market. They've shown faster growth than Visa, which is hard for Visa to do when they're already the biggest, but they're showing faster growth and their management is also in the mode of long-term um, smooth sales and revenue growth. Uh, a lot of companies tend to get caught up in like, if we can reach this one sales goal or sales number or EPS number or whatever, then we'll get our bonuses. It sounds like MasterCard has a pretty mature and wise leadership team and they're not getting caught up in those things. They have a kind of appropriate and smart long-term perspective, long-term horizon on the way they're managing things, both in terms of investing for growth and, and new technologies, but also in terms of keeping costs low. But one of the big concerns, a lot of people say, dude, Visa is double their size. They'll never be able to get to that. And one of the things we need to think about, one of the things we need to be considering when we're looking at a stock to invest is not necessarily, are they the biggest? Are they the strongest? But is how profitable are they? And they're very profitable. They're doing just fine. Another concern that could potentially be coming up is regulation. But then again, Visa and MasterCard both have presence on most continents. Um, so it's hard for a new like worldwide regulation to completely like hamper their systems or things like that. So would I invest in MasterCard right now? I personally am not gonna go and grab some MasterCard right now at this moment. I see some other companies that might have a little bit more growth in store for them. And one of the tricky things about companies that are this big is that a lot of people are watching them. So after huge dips like what we saw, most people are like, yeah, MasterCard ain't going away. I'm gonna buy it when it's low. We saw in the 52 week low was like 199 bucks. That gives you a lot of room for growth. And if you grabbed it at that time or around that time, you've already seen a bunch of growth. But when everybody's watching you, all of the future growth and all of the dividend payments and stuff like that are already baked into the price. So it is a safe long-term buy if you're thinking about holding it over the five, 10 years kind of thing. As we saw on the five-year chart, that's kind of a nice juicy trend going up that way. But if you're looking for like, you know, 2X or 5X growth in the next couple of years, probably not the stock for you, but most people aren't looking for those things. So I'm personally not gonna jump in with loads of money. I don't own MasterCard at the moment. Um, their dividend looks, eh, it looks cool. Um, their growth prospects look cool, but to me, they're not revolutionizing the whole world. And so I'm, I'm not gonna run in there and you know, throw all my money at them. But I could see how this could fit in a more conservative portfolio. So that's my thoughts on MasterCard. Soon I'll be coming out with a Discover video, maybe an American Express video. Let me know if you have any other requests for other stocks or other sectors to look into. Looking forward to seeing your comments, your thoughts. Let me know if I missed anything. Looking forward to hearing back from you. See you guys soon.